Valentines. I don't know who you were referring to as, like, why you have such a hatred for Valentines. I don't have a, it's not a hatred. It's, guys, it's, does it sound <laughs> like a hatred? It's like, who hurt you? It's not. Like, who hurt you? You are anti-Valentine. You know, I'm not against celebrating love, right? I want to celebrate you more than just February 14th, right? And I'm, you do. You know what I mean? Like, every day it should be a valentine for for both of us she low-key i believe it okay no it's small <laughs> things like if you buy me a bottle of perfume like that's fine with some flowers and chocolate and what if i it's don't <laughs> 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 we're all different as individuals right so how i relate to a challenge how i perceive a challenge may be different than how sharice does it or how someone else does it so the approach does matter All right, what's up, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the new episode of the Miles High Podcast. I am Miles Jr., your host. And as always, the vision and goal of this podcast is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. Uh got a great part today so we we are in love month right the month of february but in particular this is love week um valentine's day is this week uh so we're celebrating love this week ladies and gentlemen so for all you lovebirds out there who are gonna do something special this week shout shouts to y'all you know f funny enough um my wife and i are are just coming off our one year anniversary celebration. <laughs> Good job to us. This, this went by pretty fast, though, I must say. This this uh this year has been has been has been great. We've been enjoying it. Um we have uh, enjoyed each other's company. We've grown a lot together as as a as a married couple now. Um so happy anniversary again, babe. Happy anniversary. Uh, it feels weird to be married. What do you mean? Like you, we just—it's weird when someone says your your wife or your husband. Hang on, it's be weird like when people say Mrs. Monroe. Yeah. <laughs> nah, for real. But it's been it's been a great year. Um, we we've really enjoyed it, and you know I'm hoping for many more years, yes, and many sir. more anniversary celebrations. Uh, but but you know that that brings us to brings me to what I I want to talk about today. The title of this uh this pod, right? So we're we're going into. Uh, well, first, let me talk about Valentine's, right? Because my wife knows we've had this conversation quite a number of times, and I am not a big fan of Valentine's Day, right? I feel like Valentine's Day is just like this made-up day that they selected to be like, all right, we're going to designate this day for lovers, for them to like spend money on flowers and chocolates and teddy bears and like all of these things that, you know, honestly, I feel we should be doing with our significant others, uh, every day of the year right throughout the year not just not just on one day um you know i've i've, I've not i'm not really one to uh, celebrate or buy into the 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 day of valentine's um i think it's very commercialized at this point you know i like to think that i i kind of have valentine's with with my wife she rolling eyes right now <laughs> But I have Valentine's with my wife every day. <laughs> oh, my gift. <laughs> right? Because, you know, why, why is it that we have to buy a gift for our significant other on a particular day? Right? It ain't your birthday. It ain't Christmas. You know what I mean? So what, why? And then the focus is so much on the women, right? So I know me and Sharice would have this conversation and, you know, I'd be like, well, if I have to do something for you for Valentine's Day, you have to do something for me. I like flowers, too. I don't like roses or anything. I do like flowers. You don't like flowers. I like, sun, I like sunflowers. Like flowers. I like sunflowers. Sunfl I love sunflowers. But I mean, you know, if I feel like we should be the, the men, the men in the relationships uh, should be highlighted too on this day. This isn't just the day for the females, right? This is the lover's day, right? And it's the male and the female, the man and the woman. Um, you don't agree? No, I agree. I mean, even back when we were like in high school and people would have Valentine's Day 
people were it was reciprocal you would buy your valentine something so i don't know when so what changed this, what changed i don't think anything what changed, changed I mean, as you got older i don't think anything changed you've always gotten valentine's gift even when we were dating so i don't know who always? you were referring even the first al- time always i don't know who you were referring to as like why you have such a hatred for valentine's i don't have a, it's not a hatred and guys does it <laughs> sound like a hatred it's like who hurt you it's not like, who hurt you <laughs> It's not a hatred. I just you are anti Valentine because for of some the, reason because of the commercialization of it. That's all. Yeah, but like we discuss, everything is commercialized. Even Christmas, Easter, mm-hmm. everything is commercialized. So why not? You know why not? Why why stop at Valentine? Why not say even Christmas? Like you are forgetting the reason for Christmas. Why do you do so much? So it's just not Valentine Day. I think you have an unfair, you know, bias against that one day. Uh, let's, I, talk. I, I, let's talk let's <laughs> talk let me lay out in the couch. <laughs> when did, when did it all begin <laughs> well it started back <laughs> no nah, but um it's just the commercial commercialization of um valentine's and I, you know i'm not against celebrating love right because I, I but i just feel like especially when we're talking about like our marriage right i want to celebrate you more than just february 14th right and I'm, you do and, and and that's that's intentional right because i feel like um, it shouldn't just be, you know, I do this for you for Valentine's and this holds me over for the next couple of months. And I should, you know what I mean? Like every day it should be a Valentine for, for both of us. Right. And, and I, I just, you know, I, I, I know I don't hate the holiday. Like, don't get me wrong. Like Sharice and I would still do uh, little things here and there. You may, you know, go to dinner or like buy each other like small gifts or whatever. Um, but for the most part, like, it's not like, a a focus of a day that we celebrate um, yeah it's not like if you don't do something right. grand it's a problem it's right. just she low no she she low-key i don't believe it though, no it's small <laughs> things like if you buy me a bottle of perfume like that's fine with some flowers and chocolate and what if i don't <laughs> <laughs> she said with some flowers it's and fine chocolate. and i reciprocate as well i get you things you like you get your charcuterie board you get this don't put me on blast please I don't think it's putting you on blast. Anyway, I love the expensive. I love charcuterie boards, by the way. <laughs> um, but 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 what if I don't get you a gift? That's fine. Yeah, it's fine because you always get me gifts. So it's not like I'm only waiting on Valentine's Day for a gift. Loki, she lying, guys. No, like seriously, don't like, try it this year. But like <laughs> <laughs> some other year, <laughs> you can need that little thing. <laughs> <laughs> need that. So you know that I you know. Happy Valentine's Day, Valentine's Week to all the lovers out there. Um, whatever you do, you know, just ensure that it's not just this day that you're celebrating your love. Um, you know, just extend it throughout the rest of this year. It should be an everyday thing. Um, and, uh, and I think, too, we can use this day not only to celebrate our significant other, but friends and family. No, absolutely. And, you know, kids, too, you know. That's where it starts. Because, you know, the, the women y'all love with Galentine's, which y'all celebrate, yep. single ladies. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, well, I mean, I think that's something I'll say. Is uh, Galentine's just for single people? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was for like... Because they don't have no one to celebrate <laughs> with. <laughs> yeah. But I still think other people, even though you're married, you still get with your friends and it's for like appreciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, it's it's just it's, it's celebrating love, right? Yes, and love. and it's it's what it's it's I guess commercially it's it's what we're supposed to do uh, in February. For some reason, February is now the coin the the month of love. Yes, um, which is cool. You know, I, I think you know we could find something, find a reason uh, to celebrate. Um, but I think I'm just saying, like, I, I think the celebration of love should be should be done on a daily basis, especially if you're married with your with your spouse. You know, um, just show, showing and expressing that love in the way that works for your spouse. Right. Because the way that I express my love to Cherise is in the way that um, she would express her love to me and and vice versa. And, and, you know, for every couple out there, I'm sure you guys can attest to that. Uh, but that so, so that brings me to what I want to discuss uh, on this on this part, right? Because um, this is a month of love, and we're getting into uh, uh, a focus on like Valentine's Day is coming up this week. Um, so, the topic that I wanted to discuss is evolve and thrive, right? But evolving and thriving, I, I, I wanted to you know put a focus into into it with relationships 
or in relationships or not just like love relationships but you know f- uh, friendships business relationships all of that right i was uh, i was scrolling social media uh earlier this year and i came across this this gentleman his, his name is quentin brown and he was he was doing this uh he was he was you know having this discussion about um love and people that love us right and and he, he said this he said the person that loves you the most is the person that challenges you to be uncomfortable i'm gonna let that breathe the person that loves you the most the most is the person that challenges you to be uncomfortable you know i heard that quote and i thought about it and i was like man that is entirely true Right. And he went on to say, you know, because we, we were, were, were taught when we're growing up, right, that the person who loves me is the person who accepts me for who I am. Man, I can't tell you the amount of times, you know, me as a, as a teenager, I've said or I've heard someone say, you know, like, if you love me, you'll just accept me for who I am. You know, uh, and it's, it's what we've been conditioned to, to think and, and how we've been brought up, right? And thinking that, man, if someone isn't going to accept me, then how can they love me? I don't want to be in this relationship. Um, and it, it just brings me to, like, Teresa's and I relationship, right? Like, I, I could remember when we uh, first started dating, um, I guess both of us were a little hesitant to change, right? Because, you know, we, we have this this mindset of, like, I ain't, like nobody's going to change me. Like, you're not going to change me. I am who I am, so you could love me or hate me or leave me alone, right? And and tech, essentially, like, that's the attitude that a lot of us bring into relationships, right? And there were things that Sharice was, was challenging me about that I rejected at first, right? And I, I, took, I took a little offense to, right? But, you know, I guess my approach on things or the way that I, I perceived uh, certain things in life. And, you know, she would challenge those perspectives and, you know, it, it would create, I guess, some friction in our relationship. Um, and as we can, as we continue to communicate about it, right, and, and converse and, and have discussions, you know, eventually, like, I may start to realize, like, okay, she makes sense. And I see some flaws in, like, my, my perspective and things that I can work on. And for her, the same way, right, we, we've, we've both been uh, a challenge we, we've both been challenging each other in in different aspects of our relationship and i think it's allowed us both to grow individually and in our relationship right um you know i'm definitely not the same person individually that i was you know five years ago and i could tell you oh, she definitely is not i'm so proud of you babe way to grow and evolve and accept the challenges <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> now nah, but you know this 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 mind, mindset of <clears throat> just take me as I am, right? And and if you if you love me, you're gonna love me for who I am. I really think it uh, it it sidetracks us from um, evolving, right? Evolving as individuals and 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 developing ourselves entirely. Um, and you know what what Quentin Brown said is so entirely true, right? Because the person that that loves you the most is a person that challenges you to be uncomfortable. You know, a lot of the things, a lot of the times that, you know, Sharice would give me some pushback, you know, I felt super uncomfortable because I had to, uh, I had to open up myself to, in a way that, you know, I've never done before in a relationship. And it just, I, it did, I didn't feel comfortable doing it. I felt vulnerable. I felt, uh, I felt like I was, you know, and sometimes we have this mindset of like, I'm changing for this person, right? And, you know, I, I, we, we, I tr- we, I tried to suppress that that feeling and, and tried to you know be adamant about yo I I'm I'm not changing for for anybody I'm just gonna remain this person that I am not knowing that that person was a stubborn person someone that didn't listen someone that thought you know his way was was the best way and the right way to do things so I, I was I was very arrogant in a sense and it took me you know being a bit more humble and being a bit more open to uh, different perspectives. Um, and you have to trust the person who is giving the perspective, right? Obviously, everyone that challenges us or everyone that gives us pushback is they don't do it in they don't do it with love, right? Some, sometimes it's manipulation, sometimes it's control, sometimes it's trying to insert some type of power influence. Um, 
but people i'm talking about people that truly love us right people that really uh, want us to change or, or want us to evolve um into a better individual or the individual that they see in us that we may not see in ourselves right i could i could remember my my dad when i was uh when i was younger like my dad always challenged me and challenged me to a point where i always felt uncomfortable having certain conversations with my dad um and there were things that I just wouldn't talk to him about because, you know, I may, I may want to go there and be like, yo, I just want to ask you a simple question. Just give me a yes or no, please. And then my dad wouldn't give me a yes or no, right? It'll just be like this long discussion. I'd be like, daddy, I ain't trying to think. I, like you, you have me using too much of my brain cells right now, right? But, you know, I eventually realized that he was trying to pull more out of me than just the question that I was, I was asking and, or the answer that I was looking for. Um, and it's something that, you know, I tend to do now, uh, you know, in my relationships with Sharice, again, she's ruling her eyes <laughs> because, you know, it's so funny to me because I used to hate when my dad did it and I find myself doing the same things now I, because I understood why he was doing it. I, I, I understood what he was trying to like pull out of me. Right. And, and it just challenged me. It challenged me to be a, a better person, especially in my professional life. Right. You know, I, I never want to be one track minded. So my, my dad actually taught me to never want to do or accomplish the things that we accomplished last year. I all, I'm always trying to outdo myself and not outdo myself in competition, but just outdo myself in a, a, a mindset, a mind state of there's more than one way to skin a cat. Right. So we skinned the cat a, a particular way last year. Let's find a, Let's find a new way, a, maybe a better way to do it this year. So that constant state of evolution um, that I try to keep um, in my life I mean, as I go through, uh, you know, these these different obstacles in my uh, professional life, in my personal life, even in my spiritual life, you know, I, I try to accept these challenges so that I can grow. Um, and my dad was was you know one of the catalysts that you know sparked that growth in me because because of his love for me, you know, his. He expressed that by wanting to pull out and wanting to see uh, this evolution of who I was or who I could be. You know, the person that I I didn't know that that existed, right? The, the person that is comfortable now, you know, sitting here and, and having this conversation with you guys, you know, on this podcast and enjoying it, right? And being confident in it. Uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I, this was not me. Um, but, you know, he saw it and he, you know, set me on the path to evolve to this point. And it's something that I think is important, especially when we get into relationships. Right. Because if you're in a relationship with the right person, like like for, for Sharice, there there were things that Sharice was showing me or I guess wasn't showing me that I knew that she had that, that she possessed that I wanted to pull out of her. So, you know, it, uh, you know, she she calls it me being annoying um, but it's, it's just really me challenging her beyond the point that she may want to be challenged, right? Because I, I can relate to, you know, that pushback that she gives to, to say, man, I trying to have this conversation right now because I used to do the same thing. You know, like she would ask me a particular question. I mean, you know what? Let me let me let you. She roll an eye again. <laughs> like like this, this is the annoying part right here. <laughs> explain. <laughs> like because like you said, how you used to carry on with your dad. Mm hmm. I would ask you a simple question <laughs> like what is 20 percent of twenty thousand dollars and then you would ask me well what you would you if if 20 percent, well what is 10 percent? what do you think like i ain't ask you all of that like i am not a mathematician <laughs> i know i can pull up my calculator but you're right here you want me to pull out a piece of paper write it down telling me how to get it like no i just need you to answer what is 20 percent of this twenty thousand dollars, so mm -hmm. it's like stuff like that. But I do feel that you do challenge me to do more because, in terms of if I ask you a question, you would look at it and make me see the bigger picture instead of just this one thing. So I think you do challenge me, but sometimes it's like this ain't the right time, this ain't the right place. And Sharice is the type of person like when we have the conversation, like it'll be resistance in the conversation. And then, like, maybe a couple of days later, like, I'll just peep her doing, like, what I suggested or what I recommended. So, like, she'd be listening, but she just stubborn, right? And 
I guess the type of person who like, like you ain't gonna tell me what to do. Like I could do it when I wanna do it, you know? And I, the, the reason why it's funny to me because I'm the exact same way, right? Like don't tell me what to do, right? Like if I ask you a question, I ask you to, to, to you know, give me an instruction or give me a, a, a command, like, right? Uh, you can make a suggestion, you could like, you know, w w whatever the case. But eventually I think like we, if, if you're the type of person that want to evolve or want to grow, like you're going to see the sense in, in what's being said and you're going to start applying it. But um, I think too, it's also the person who is giving the information. I think it's how you give the information. It's not like a, you know, overbearing type mm -hmm. of way. I'm not ready to like, you have to look at someone and see that they are ready to receive information because there are times where it's like, listen, it ain't the right time mm -hmm. versus like if we're just sitting there and, you know, we're having a conversation and you're like, hey, uh, I want to teach you how to do something. Or I know a few weeks ago you asked me how to do something, but I thought about it and I want to present this way to tell you how to do something. So I think it's all about being, you know, just connecting those dots and listening to or just observing how someone is in that particular moment. Yeah, but it's not, I mean, you know, sometimes it's not going to come off the way you want it to come off, right? Agreed. And And sometimes it's not even the way, um, the way it's said, it's the fact that it's even being said, you yeah. know? Because I can remember sometimes my, my, my dad would have said things to me, or even sometimes you say things to me, and it's, it's like, it's almost like... <laughs> Like, like how your approach is, like, who you think you're talking to? Mm -hmm. Like, why? Like, I ask you this, like, I ask you for your opinion on this or whatever. But, you know, the fact that you say it, right, you, you, you make it audible. I hear it and I internalize it. Even if I reject it initially, you know, I'm going to repeat it to myself and try to see, okay, does this make sense? Because obviously she said it for a reason or my dad said it for a reason. So how can I, like, take, what can I take away from it to apply to my life? But I also think, too, it's sometimes people knowing <clears throat> that they are supposed to be doing something mm. and they're not doing it. Like, I'm not living up to my, the expectation that I have for myself. The potential. Don't the say potential that I have for myself or mm -hmm. what people see in me, which is why a lot of people, you know, react the way they do because you holding up a mirror to me right now. Yeah. And and I think that's the biggest thing, right? We 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 get offended or we feel a certain type of way because... These people hold up a mirror to ourselves, to us. And and we see this reflection that that man, this is who I, I'm supposed to be, but I trying to that take too much work, man. Like I ain't trying to get to that point. You know what I mean? We have this resistance to change. We have this resistance to ch to challenging ourselves, to evolving and thriving, right? And you know, Sharice brings up the good point. Like persons who really love us, uh, they see something in us, or they see so much more in us. Than, than what we are showing, right? Or that, than what we see in ourselves. And their love for us is, is causing them to want to pull that out of us. And, you know, my dad was that type of person. Like, my, my dad would meet people. Like, I would ask my dad, like, you know, these persons, you know, it would be people who, like, you know, don't have good motives, you know, coming around him. And, you know, some of them weren't terrible motives. It just wasn't, like, good motives. And I'd be like, you know, why, why do you even waste your time? And, you know, his perspective was like, I see something in these persons, in, in these people that uh, that I want to pull out. Right. I see potential in them. I see something in them that that I want them to see, that I want to challenge them to bring out. Uh, and that's not going to happen if I like tell them, like, not come around or I resist them or, or whatever. Like you have to sometimes you have to welcome uh, the people that uh, don't have good motives to teach them. A little bit a little bit more about themselves um and and you know that takes man that that takes some uh some patience super patient like my dad was super patient with me y'all y'all hear me like mm -hmm. like i the the patient man i'm so appreciative of the patience that he had because i was super resistant to the challenges and i think him showing me the patience allows me to be patient um at least a little a, a little patient uh, when, when doing that, right? And wh whether it's with Sharice, whether it's with, you know, someone else that I'm working with or a mentee, um, I'm, su I'm, I'm willing to be patient because I understand the process of the word or the challenge that is being given, the process of that, set it, of that setting in. Um, and it all, it all is supposed to come from love, right? And uh, my, my point for, for this part is like, I want us to, in, in this month of love, right? When, when we love on people, let's love on them in a way where 
we don't just love them for who they are, right? Let's love them for who we know that they can be, right? And let's challenge them to, to bring that person out. Um, and I, I want to challenge each of us this year, right? Moving forward, don't run away from the challenges. You know, the, in a lot of relationships, a lot of relationships end because like there's this this feeling of like, you're trying to change me. Like, I don't want you to change me, right? And uh, I, I think we need to, to, to just convert thinking that people want to change us, that they're just challenging us to be better. So don't run away from the challenge. So this year I want us to commit to accepting the challenge, right? Accepting the challenge to evolve ourselves in our relationships uh, and evolve ourselves in our professional lives, evolve, evolve ourselves in our personal lives, because life is about overcoming challenges, right? We're, we're supposed to be challenges. Challenges help to build the individuals that we are, right? It helps, it, it helps us to evolve into the individuals that we're supposed to be. And we're never, we're never supposed to stop being challenged. You know, I think it's a, it's a, it's, it's a thing. It's, it's like learning, right? We're never supposed to stop learning. There's always supposed to be information that we're retaining and that we're applying and, well, putting some understanding to it and then applying it to our lives to show ourselves wise. Um, so don't, don't run away from the challenge this year. You know, that's, that's my challenge to, to everyone um, for this year. I, I want us to accept the challenges uh, in our love lives, in our professional lives, in our personal lives, uh, to be better persons, you know, to be, to be better individuals. Babe, any, anything else? But I still think that when you speak of, you know, wanting to help people change, you also have to be mindful of the approach because, you know, <laughs> we've, we, we try to help people in our lives, but if they aren't receptive to that change, that can strain relationships. Mm. So I think that's something that we should all be aware of, that there's a time and a place for everything and do it with love, uh, from a place of love. Mm. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, again, to, to just tack on to that, we're all different as individuals, right? So how I um, relate to a challenge, how I perceive a challenge may be different than how Sharice does it or how someone else does it. So the approach does matter, right? You, you can't approach everyone the same way to challenge them to, to be better or to evolve. Um, so in, in challenging, like just be mindful of, you know, how you're going to uh, put that challenge forth. Um, but at the end of the day, I think if we, if we ground it in love and we do it with love, uh, hopefully the message gets across and the message may not get across in the moment, right? It may take a couple of weeks, may take a couple of days, may take a couple of months. It may even take a couple of years, but you know, as long as it was grounded in love, right. And it was expressed in love. I, I, I think at some point it, it'll hit home and, you know, hopefully the individual that we are that is being challenged, you know, accepts the challenge to evolve and thrive in their lives. All right. So that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. You know, being the month of love, I really wanted us to just look at it from a different perspective. I didn't want to, you know, get on the, the lovey dovey couples type perspective. I wanted to dig a little deeper. Um, and hopefully we, 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 uh, were able to do that today. Uh, babe, anything else you want to share? No, no, no nothing. Good? All right, so that brings us to the portion of the pod where I share with you a milestone. And the milestone today is quite simple, right? And it's simply changing a habit is never difficult. Difficult is to address your unwillingness to do it. So changing habits isn't hard, right? But it becomes hard when you're unwilling to accept the challenge to change. Um, so again, my, my challenge for us this year is to, let's not run away from the challenges. Let's not run away from the challenges in our, in our love lives when our significant others are, are, are challenging us to, to be better individuals or to grow uh, uh, as, as an individual in the relationship. Let's not run away from challenges in our professional lives, right? When our managers, our supervisors, our bosses, our mentors, you know, just want us to evolve um, as individuals, as professionals. And let's not run, run away from challenges in our spirit, spirit, spiritual lives. You know, in my last point, I said, you know, let's challenge ourselves to uh, fast and pray a little more this year to, to grow our faith. Um, and let's not run away from, from these challenges, right? Because we want to continue evolving and thriving as individuals. Okay. 
So that brings us to the end of this pod. This was a good one. Uh, babe, thank you for your contributions. You're welcome. Appreciate you. Um, but as you know, as always, the vision and goal for this pod is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right, so until next time, you guys stay blessed.